Sunday, the second Sunday uh, after Epiphany. We'll be back here again in Sparta. <coughs> the epistle for the second Sunday after Epiphany is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. Brethren, having different gifts according to the grace that is given us, either prophecy to be used according to the rule of faith, or ministry and ministry, or he that teacheth in doctrine, he that exhorteth in exhorting, he that giveth with simplicity, he that ruleth with carefulness, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, that love be without dissimulation, hating that which is evil, cleaving to that which is good, loving one another with the charity of the brotherhood, in honor preventing one another, in carefulness not slothful, in spirit fervent, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, instant in prayer, communicating to the necessities of the saints, pursuing hospitality. Bless them that persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice, weep with them that weep, being of one mind, one towards another, not mind high things, but consenting to the humble. In the Gospel, taking that according to St. John, chapter 2. That time there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And Jesus also was invited, and his disciples, to the marriage. And the wine, wine failing, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what is that it to me and to thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said to the waiters, Whatsoever he shall say to you, do ye. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three measures apiece. And Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And Jesus said to them, Draw out now, and carry to the chief steward of the feast. And they carried it. And when the chief steward and had tasted the water made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the waiters knew, who had drawn the water. The chief steward ca uh, calleth the bridegroom, and saith to him, Every man at first setteth forth good wine, and when men have drunk well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles that Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Those are the words of today's holy gospel. Father, and the Father, and the Son of the Ghost, Amen. At this miracle, the marriage feast of Cana, that our Lord, He did some miracles before all men. Some things are for all men to see, and other things He did only for those that were close to His, close to Him, those that loved Him, those that are, that were near Him. And now we see here in the marriage feast of Cana. The first miracle, the first miracle. St. John tells us that it was most likely the very first miracle that Christ ever performed. We know that there are some of the apocryphal gospels and some pious stories that when our Lord Jesus Christ was a little child, there may have been some other miracles, such as the curing of the good thief as a little baby who was a leper, or the knocking down of the statues of the pagans as the Jews, as our Lord Jesus Christ, the Blessed Virgin, when St. Joseph were on their way to Egypt. But, we, but according to the St. John, it says this was the first of the miracles. The first of the miracles that he worked amongst his apostles. And there are some miracles that are not seen by all. There are some not seen by all. St. Jerome speaks about this a little bit. And St. Augustine also, when he says that Christ did his public miracles, he did public miracles before he died on the cross, but when he rose from the dead, he didn't appear to everyone. Before he died, everyone could see him. His public teachings, his public miracles were visible to all, the good and the evil alike. But when he rose from the dead, he appeared only to his friends. He appeared only to them, and he showed to them his resurrection. He showed to them his beauty in a way that would never be seen by his enemies. And remember what our Lord did say before he died. I pray not for the world's. 
And uh, the world shall not see me, and the devil shall not see him. So we see here that there are many ways, that there are several ways of seeing Christ and being with Christ. And the world that God created was good. And the world that he recreated in the, by his resurrection, and by his crucifixion and resurrection, is more wonderful. And God intended the world to be peaceful. God intended the world to be filled with, with, a, with a great uh, uh, happiness. And remember what our Lord said about following him. If you choose to follow me, says Christ to all men, and everyone can hear this word, follow me, because my yoke is easy and my burden light. The yoke of Christ is very easy. His burden is very light. It isn't hard to follow him. And we see this in the first of his miracles. All, all that is necessary for this miracle to take place is first of all that Christ be invited to the feast. You know that when there are marriages, one of the warnings of Christ about marriage, there was a man that said he was invited to the feast of Christ, and he says, I bought a farm, and I cannot come, and I will not be able to come. Another man said, I am married, and it is impossible for me to come. I have got a wife, and I therefore I cannot come. This is one of the excuses that somehow when there are marriages, many, many times in many, many marriages, because a man is a wife, He's got no room for Christ. <clears throat> because a wife has a husband, she has no time for Christ. And Christ is left out of the marriage. And this causes misery. We can see what happens in all modern marriages in which there is not Christ. There is divorce. There is misery before the divorce. There is abortion. There is birth control. There is misery in those children that have survived through the abortion and survived through the birth control. There is fighting over money. There is ugliness. There is selfishness. There is absolute wretchedness inside of the marriage. And, the, and whatever little joys that there are, are empty. And there are covering of empty consciences. And then they try to keep themselves busy to cover up their wicked consciences. Because Christ is not in the marriage. And when Christ is not in the marriage over a period of time, marriage itself dissolves. Marriage itself falls apart, as we see today. But look at this marriage feast in which Christ performed his first miracle. He was invited to the feast. He needs to be invited into our families. He needs to be invited to the feast. It isn't that hard to become a saint. It isn't that hard to be pleasing to God. It isn't that hard to be happy. The first thing is, invite Christ and his apostles. Because remember about Christ, one problem about Christ is he never comes alone. He always comes with these fishermen, he always comes with some people that are headaches. For instance, when our Lord Jesus Christ came to the feast, they said, come to the feast. Well, he came with fishermen. And as Father Urban Snyder used to say, that the reason why they ran out of wine is because Christ brought the fishermen with him. Christ brought uh, the men that knew how to drink. They had enough wine for the feast, as long as you don't invite someone extra. And so they, but when Christ came, he came with all his friends. He came with his apostles. But invite Christ and his apostles. And then, of course, as St. Augustine, the most important thing of all, what is it that makes this miracle wonderful? And what is it that makes uh, something beautiful to happen? Water is going to turn into wine. So, uh, shepherd, uh, stewards are going to, uh, servants are going to see a great miracle who were just the guys working in the back of the kitchen. The ones working in the kitchen, the ones waiting and bussing the tables, they'll be the ones that will see a great miracle. The bridegroom shall not be embarrassed. The bride shall be more happy. The guests shall increase in their joy and their happiness. And all good things will happen. Why? The word is quite close here in the gospel. It says there was a marriage feast in Cana, and the mother of Jesus was there. That's all. The mother of our Lord was there. Somehow, if she's there, so many things are going to happen. That's the first thing. The mother of Jesus was there. The mother of God was there. She was just there. And because she was there, when Christ was invited, oh, he has a few extra apostles. It was not yet 12, maybe at that time. Six, five, six, seven, eight. They were not yet fully 12. But they were all coming. All the disciples, apostles there. And then there were others that came along with them. Many before, besides just these apostles, some of the disciples also came. And they came into the feast, and they drank, and they were running out of wine. And the mother of Jesus simply says, all right, they have no wine. 
How hard is it to love God? How hard is it to be faithful? Bishop Sheen gives the example, he says, consider it like unto drunkenness. Which is easier, to be sober or to be a drunk? What happens when you're a drunkard? When you're a drunkard, you lose all your friends, you have bad breath, you, you get sick, you have all kinds of liver problems, you experience great depression, you're in the state of mortal sin, you're on the path to hell, your body is sped up on its path to death, you, all your friends abandon you, your money disappears, and whatever little joys you had in life slowly disappear. They all disappear. And so, in fact, it's not so easy to be a drunk. Get rid of the drunkenness. Get rid of that mortal sin. And be sober. And life becomes so much easier. The money is not wasted. The friends return. Our, our mind is clear. And so it is, and many other things, if we simply follow Christ. If we simply invite our Blessed Virgin Mary into the marriage, make sure that she's there every day in the Holy Rosary. Make sure she's there today under fulfillment of the obligations, which are not so difficult. It isn't that difficult for the wife to obey her husband. It isn't that difficult for the husband to love the wife. It's not that difficult to take care of the daily responsibilities of married life and to simply make sure that Christ is the center of the marriage, or the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ is there in the marriage, and then will happen miracles, little miracles. And it isn't a very heavy cost. Our Lord said, my yoke is easy and my burden light. So you want to make good wine? Good wine is very expensive. But not if it's a good wine of our Lord. He doesn't charge very much. He simply says, take some water and fill the water pots. That's all. Take the water and fill the water pots. Now, take the water to the chief steward, to the Archidriclinus. Take the water to the chief steward. Now, if I take the water to the chief steward to test the water, he will become angry. He will fire me. Why am I taking him to test? Why am I taking the chief steward to test water? But the but our Lord says, take water to the chief steward. And they don't know what to do. And our Lord, Blessed Virgin Mary then says her final words that are recorded in the gospel. She turns to those, to, to those bus boys, to those, uh, those ones that are carrying the water pots and busing the tables, and simply says, do whatever he tells you. And so when they hear her say, do whatever he says, now it must not be, we won't get in trouble. We're not going to get in trouble when we take the water to the chief steward. So we'll fill the water pots. That's what he said to do. And she said, do whatever he tells you. And then we're going to take the water to the, to the chief steward, and he will taste it. And he tastes it, and then he calls together the Archidraclinus, or rather he calls together the, the bridegroom, who knows nothing. He knows nothing. All he knows is that the apostles were invited to the feast. The mother of our Lord Jesus Christ is there. And the servants are doing what Christ says. And so he goes, he goes to the to the to the Archidraclinus, to the chief steward. The chief steward says to him that everyone else puts out the good wine first. But thou hast saved the good wine until now. And the fathers of the church remind us, and all the supernatural authors, one essential difference between following Christ and following the devil. Following Christ and following the way of sin is that when you follow the way of sin and when you follow the world, the good wine comes first. And it's not very good. The good, the good times come first. And after you taste the good times the devil has to offer, it is always followed by depression. It is always followed by emptiness. And the good times go away and everything gets older, and everything gets old, and eventually it comes to death. And so the good times, as soon as you touch them, you know they're about to end. And you try to find new good times, and there, but there are no new good times. And all the times come to an end, because everything that Christ, the devil gives is good only for a brief period of time, and then it goes away. You cannot keep your youth, you cannot keep the good wine, you cannot keep the good food. You cannot keep your beauty. You cannot keep your, your popularity. At some point, it all goes away. At some point, it's all forgotten. Look at all the great heroes of sports, all the great heroes of the movies, all the great heroes of the various cultures of the last 6,000 years. They are forgotten. They are abandoned. They are empty. They are nothing. 
They have rotted away. These are the good times of the devil. But our Lord says, even the pagans recognize you have saved the good wine until now. That when you have our Lord Jesus Christ, the wine starts off good. But when you take another sip, it's a little bit better. And when you take another sip, it's a little bit better. And you have saved the good wine until now. Now never ends. And so the good wine is always going to be, there's always going to be a better wine. There's always going to be a better taste. There's always going to be a greater love. There's always going to be a greater joy. There's always going to be a greater consolation. There's always going to be something more wonderful when you follow Christ. You go around one corner following him and you have a cross. And you walk around that corner with a cross and you see a joy. You follow him up a little higher in the mountain, a little bit colder, a little bit further away from the world, a little bit more suffering, and you turn the corner and there is greater joy. We find, for instance, in the lives of the saints, they were so filled with joy. St. Paul himself says, I know a man, whether in the body, out of the body, I know not. God knows that such a man was taken up into the third heaven to hear things forbidden for man to hear, to see things forbidden for man to see. If we follow Christ, we only have to pour a little bit of water. He will turn it into wine. We only have to listen to simple commands. We have to have a little bit of faith, a little bit of confidence. And all that's done by simply the love of the Blessed Virgin Mary. By the making sure that the mother of Jesus is there. That she's there in our homes. She's there in our hearts. She's there in our spirit. And then when we go through all the different troubles of life, there will always be a little bit better wine. There will always be a little bit better wine until the greatest of the wine of all, which is the beatific vision, which we will drink for all eternity. And so remember, following Christ means happiness. And what does our Lord say about the happiness? He actually puts a number on it. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his justice here on this earth, and you will receive 100-fold here below. A hundred times the happiness of the man of the world. You know, oftentimes they're always trying to disguise how happy they are. They're there in the business. They're there in Hollywood. They're very popular. And the next thing you know, you read the paper, they committed suicide. They're taking always drugs all the time. They're going from psychiatrist to psychiatrist, from psychologist to psychologist. They are filled with anger and hate. They're in massive, massive depression. And they go from sadness to greater sadness. And this is the life of Hollywood. This is the life of the wicked men in the world. But they, but in order to cover themselves, they try to say, well, I've got money, I've got the popularity, which doesn't last. And they have an emptiness that's deeper and deeper. The just man thinks he has many sorrows, but sacred scripture says, the just man's sorrows to the just man are many, but the sorrows of the fool are infinite. Do not think that the fools of this world who follow Satan, the fools of this world who live with impurity, the fools that live with the various, all the various vices of the seven capital sins. These fools do not have happiness. And the more they, they, they give themselves to their wicked ways, the more empty and the more ugly they become. And the more miserable they become. But if we follow Christ, just let him inside the marriage feast. Invite him and all his disciples. Invite them in the feast. Give them a liberal amount of wine. Make sure you give them a muff. A muff. They may do the works of charity. And give them the good wine. And the good wine, don't save it. And don't go spend it all right away in the beginning. But continue to give, give good wine. And there will be better wine that will come later. And better wine will come later. Because God always makes better and better wine. If we only follow him. And this is the first of the miracles that he worked before his disciples. Now notice this miracle takes place. Now, the chief steward, he tasted the miracle. The bridegroom was there at the time of the miracle. The people were participating of all the benefits of that miracle. This is the case of the Catholic Church. Even in pagan cultures, wherever there's a Catholic Church, wherever the Catholic Church sets up, there's hospitals. Wherever the Catholic Church sets up, there's education. Wherever the Catholic Church sets up, there's a more sane society, a more just society, a more charitable society. And the benefits of the Catholic Church has spread throughout the whole world. And even the enemies of the church, they drink the wine. But they don't know from whence it came. They don't know from whence it came. They accept the order that comes from Christian civilization. They accept the teaching that comes from Christian civilization. But they don't like Christianity. And hence, 
They will lose it all because they don't invite Christ inside of their house. But they still taste the wine, but they don't know from whence it came. They don't know why it's good. They don't know how the good wine lasted so long. They don't know who made the decision to save the good wine until now. It isn't that our Lord saved the good wine until now. Every time he makes wine, it's going to be better than the previous time. And there, as, as, because the mother of Jesus is there, it's going to always be better. It's we're always going up, always going to a better place. And so those that follow Christ, they will have tears. Those that follow Christ will have sorrows. Those that follow Christ will have worries. But the worries shall be continually ended. They shall be continually embraced with little consolations, little blessings, as long as the mother of Jesus is there. As long as we will do whatever he tells us. And as long as we, with the servants, simply as simple servants, are willing to take simple tasks and fill the water pots with water. Be emptied of the worry of, about self. Don't fill the water pots for our own self, but fill them to be given to the guests. We must do the works of charity and believe firmly in our holy faith. Live by the faith, and the miseries of life are much less. Live by the faith, and the joys of life are much more. And as we continue in the faith, the joys get greater. Even though there are sorrows, the joys will be greater and greater. But continue in the ways of the world, and the joys are taken away. And so we must remember to persevere in our holy faith. It isn't so difficult. Invite Christ to the marriage feast. Invite the apostles to the marriage feast inside of our marriages. And live with the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the mother of God in our midst, with the holy rosary, and live in according to the faith. And God will bless us and get us through the various trials of this life. And this miracle Will, will, will carry us in the, in the time of the difficulties of this world and eventually be followed by the, the beatific vision and the taste of even greater wine in the kingdom of heaven. So God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.